What is going on, Vikings and Draconians? Draco Invictus here, and today we are building the new workshop. Yes. Now, if you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, well, you need to go watch my base tour video where I showed my previous workshop and how it was just a little too small for my upcoming needs, adding the artisan workbench and all of the other things that go in there. I just didn't have room. So I'm building a bigger building. And it's gonna be about a third bigger, and at the end you'll see plenty of room, and it's just fantastic. So let's get started with this. It's all going to be out of stone, at least for the foundation and all the walls. Of course, we're doing thatch roofing, and uh, there's a lot of support in there, and we'll see all of that. But it all starts with these two pieces that I'm standing with, and they're two two-by-one stone blocks. And we are going to create our perimeter and we're going to build everything off of that. Basically, you put down two blocks, do one rotation, one click with the, not click, one spin of the mouse wheel. So it gives you one tick of rotation of the block and then we place it down. And so let's take a look at that. And I'm gonna play some cool music, uh, do some time lapse here, and I will interject as things, you know, pop up that I should talk about. Now here we're gonna start putting down the actual stone flooring for this. And what we're doing to get the pattern right is we're basing off of the first block that we put down. It was the first two that I already had down. And then we're going to go every odd one. So one, three, five, all the way around. And then we will fill in after that. But you're going to see me do the initial first row all the way around right now. Now this was a bridge too far because I need to put the bonfire in first, so I'll rip all this up. Now the reason why we went in three first instead of going numerically all the way around was because there are so many different snap points. Once you get toward the middle, it can get really, really confusing. So we wanted to get this pattern, the starburst pattern in the middle first with the every odd and then we can just go in and fill in the holes. Now, right here in the center of this starburst or circular saw blade, uh, we're going to elevate the ground because that's where the bonfire is going to go. You're going to see me kind of play with that a little bit. Then I'm gonna throw up some walls and then we're going to figure out exactly how we can put a stone ring around the fire and it's some trial and error. It's not exactly perfect because placing the bonfire is vitally important for that. But I left a lot of that footage in just so that you guys can see the process that I went through. Now here I'm using these little small stones, the little one by ones, to frame the doorway so that we can put a stone up on top of it. Because again, stone doesn't stack on top of wood, it only stacks on top of other stone. So 
I needed to frame this in and I'm just using the faces of the, the stones. That's why I set that one out so that I can go back and look at the back side of it to get the stone to drop in where I want it to go. Now to get that stone over the door properly, I'm using these one by two, or the two by one stone walls. And this is going to be the top layer of our wall. And then I'll be able to snap the uh, wall section over the door properly. Now here, we're just gonna decorate the front of it a little bit, uh, give it uh, some dimension other than just round. I didn't like this little X there. I thought I would, but I didn't, so. That's a much better X. So now here I'm basing off of that first stone again, and I'm using the side face of that two by one over there uh, to push against so that I know that I'm gonna be perfectly lined up. And I end up running into a big issue here. This is a very interesting way of putting these in though. It works really, really well. So with building this stone circle around the fire, it's not a single click with the rotation, It's two rotations for each block. So instead of having 16 sections, we're going to have eight. But it's right in this area that I start having issues. The bonfire's getting in the way from me pushing against that face of the, of the, the support block, the temporary one, and it just, it won't go in. So I end up having to pull out the bonfire Pull out the center starburst flooring and replace it all. And we'll see that here in just a second. And now we move on to the beams. I'm trying to get the skeleton of this thing set up. So every other section, not every other stone, is going to get a beam aimed toward the middle, toward the uh, toward the fire pit. And it is, it's going to end up being two 45 degree angles up and then two 26 degree angles down. And now if you quickly place these core wood beams, they won't fall down. 
but they they turn very red and they will fall if you don't get support underneath them pretty quickly. I didn't have that problem, but I have had it in the past. And now we're just putting in other pieces. They're not needed for structural. It's more just to kind of break up the flow a little bit. And there she is. Our bonfire is lit and it looks fantastic. Now, here we're going to reach for the sky. Again, more architectural kind of stuff. Uh, we're going to continue these 45 degree beams up to the top. Do a little like diamond formation up here. And now we're just adding in more supports down to those center columns. Because a lot of these beams are kind of going to disappear when we start putting roofing on, which is what we're doing now. And I'm starting in the middle in between the beams because those flat sections are really going to help fill in as we get up toward the top. But yeah, you lose most of the beams when you're putting it in. See, they just kind of blend in. So having those supports, that secondary support coming back down toward the center column is really going to just be a, a beautiful structural element that we have going on. And now we're putting in the 26 degree roof pieces. And if you don't put that one in the center, then you end up with a gap. And so you end up putting it at the bottom and putting one up at the top of it and it fills in all those gaps perfectly. And there she is. There's the roof completely done, no gaps. All we have is the center hole over the bonfire and bonfires aren't affected by weather. So, okay, so now we're up here on the roof and I was just uh, playing with these uh, dragon ornamental pieces here. And um, I like the one up at the top, it's all right. Um, the one over here by the door, I just didn't care for, so I didn't put it in. Now becomes the big build. Now we are putting in all of the hardware for the workshop. And the kilns are integral to everything that goes on in the workshop because you need a crap ton of coal. And so I was trying to find a way of saving more floor space by elevating. I didn't even know if this was going to work. It works so well. Oh, when you when you guys see it at the end, you're gonna be like, that's what I'm doing next time. So uh, yeah, putting the cones elevated and I end up doing uh, chimneys for all of it, uh, both smelters, both kilns and the blast furnace. Uh, just, I don't think there would be a smoke problem in here because these don't put out terrible amount of smoke, not like a, a normal fire or the bonfire, but I still wanted it for uh, purposes of being immersive. Now here, I'm actually trying to figure out how do I want the smelter compared to the kiln? Because obviously, I don't want to have to keep running back and forth and back and forth. I You end up running back and forth because the ore goes in one side, the charcoal goes in the other, and it's just not a good design. The blast furnace is a much better design because it loads on both on one side for everything. Now here I realized I put it in the wrong spot. I put it right, uh, uh, have a beam right over the top of it. So now I'm actually going to move it in between the beams and uh, this will be its final home.
Hey, it worked! Yay! Time to put in the rest. So now I'm laying the support for the chimneys as they'll go up and uh, I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking here. I'm just going to let the video kind of show for itself. I'm just trying to get proper placement and stuff like that to minimize the footprint so that I can still move around really well inside here.
So here we are with the final product. I've gone ahead and dressed up the building a little bit more. Uh, got all my equipment in. It's all running right now. Even got my little new windmill. That is so awesome. It is actually, I, I could just stand here and listen to it because it does this woo, woo, woo sound. Oh, it's very cool. Anyway, uh, so let's head on in and see the madness. I apologize for the noise. All right, now that the thematic entrance is done with, uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk about what I got set up in here. So uh, this is my basic collection area, uh, resins, uh, flint and stone, and then each of the different biomes has its own little box. Well, except meadows and forest have lumped together. And um, then over here we have tin and copper ore, and then iron and silver ore. Uh, they so that I can load them directly into the smelters right here and uh, as you can see they're all working right now and I did go to the plains and I started collecting some flax so I can make linen thread and then over here between my forge and my workbench I have a lot of the materials that I would be using at these two workbenches so it's all kind of right here easily accessible and I do have the uh, the blast furnace running, uh, making some black metal. Now in here in the cave, uh, here's the box for the black metal ore again, so I can load it directly into the smelter. As you can see, my uh, my coal kilns are working full force. Oh, just caught us another coal. How about this one over here? There we go. And then over here, we stoke the fires. And this is where I actually collect the, uh, the material from this smelter. Uh, it does work. Uh, there is nothing back there right now. So even though that pillar is there, uh, I do get close enough that I can pick that up. And uh, so yeah, that that's it. Let me take you around the outside really quick here. I've uh, cleaned up all that mess. And I just kind of, you know, uh, dressed up at the building so it wasn't just basic stone like this one or that one for that matter um so i did the x's uh with the vertical posts all the way around as i fall down this hill really digging the chimneys don't mess with me boy Yeah, got the different chimneys going. Even though I don't think it's needed in that building, but I wanted to make it look like that's how you would set it up. You'd set them up so that each year smoke producing things uh, had a chimney. So. so that is the new workshop, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it uh, There was a lot of trial and error that you guys didn't see. Uh, a couple redos where I was like, all right, tear it back down to the foundation. Let's start over. Uh, just so that I could make sure that I could easily show you guys uh, how to get this done. If you wanted to, I mean, obviously you don't need to build your workshop like this, but if you wanted to build a a building like this, I mean, this could be your, your starter hut. And instead of stone, you use wood. The same principles apply for two sections and then a turn and then two sections and a turn two sections and a turn and um it, you can make yourself a, a yurt <laughs> so i mean that's uh, pretty much what this thing is so if you guys would like to see more stuff from valheim then you need to make sure that you are subscribed and click the bell notification icon so that you get notified the next time i post a video i am doing a doc video uh showing kind of how I built that one. I mean, obviously I'm not gonna rebuild this exact dock over here, but I will show you guys uh, how to get away from the shore a little bit more and uh, things to consider when you are building your dock. So, and I have another cool idea that I don't wanna talk about yet because I have to see if it's even going to work. So I have to do a little testing before I can even see if it's going to work. 
But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, kicks, or complaints, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. I love to hear from you guys. And until next time, I want you to take care of yourselves out there. This is Draco Invictus saying this has been the greatest day in my life. See ya.